these three American astronauts consider themselves among the luckiest men in the world. They are going to the moon. They will not land, but their job is to fly the Apollo 8 spacecraft to the moon, orbit 10 times, and return safely to Earth. Frank Borman, 40, Air Force Colonel, making his second space flight as commander of Apollo 8. Jim Lovell, 40, Navy Captain, holds the record for more time in space than any other man, with a total of 425 hours and nine seconds. He will be command module pilot for the mission. Bill Anders, 35, Air Force Major, making his space debut as lunar module pilot aboard Apollo 8. This is the vehicle, the mighty Saturn V, that will send the men on their six-day trip. Standing 60 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty from first stage through the launch escape system, the vehicle weighs over six million pounds, most of which is propellant. These massive first stage engines, five in all, generate seven and a half million pounds of thrust and drink propellant. The Apollo spacecraft, product of eight years of design, construction, testing, redesign, and more testing. The spacecraft proved itself worthy during its initial test flight of Apollo 7. Traveling more than 4.3 million miles in Earth orbit, the vehicle responded to each command in a manner that left no doubt in the minds of scientists, engineers, and Apollo crewmen that the craft is indeed capable of carrying three men around the moon. This is the target, averaging about 238,000 statute miles from Earth. The decision to make this trip in late December was dictated by three factors. The first two, a daylight launch and daylight landing, are scheduled in the interest of crew safety. The third is that before useful pictures can be taken or navigational sightings obtained over the planned landing site area, the lighting conditions on the lunar surface must meet certain standards. These conditions are present between December 21st and 27th. If Apollo 8 is not launched between these dates, it would be almost a month before the same conditions exist. In order to master the navigational techniques that have to be proven before others can safely follow, over 200 hours have been spent in simulators, observatories, and planetariums. These navigational techniques were proven to a considerable degree during the pioneering flight of Apollo 7, Yet, the upcoming flight will confront the Apollo 8 crew with even more navigational challenges. Star charts, sextant readings, and triangulation plottings have been the subject of the most extensive study since man began to fly. Perhaps the confidence and readiness of the crew was best summed up by Frank Borman. It was a conservative mission. I didn't mean that I thought that there weren't risks or dangers involved. And, and I don't subscribe to the school that says you take more danger driving on a freeway and this sort of thing because there, uh, you, don't, you don't have to, uh, to study the space, space program too closely to realize that we're flying a Saturn V and we've got elements of danger all along the way. But I can't help thinking when I see that vehicle, the, the booster and the spacecraft, that we're looking at the best that American technology can produce and uh, I have confidence that it'll be good enough. Soon, the giant Saturn V will lift Apollo 8 from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, to begin its climb into space. After approximately two revolutions around the Earth to check out the vehicle, the crew will begin their journey to the moon by restarting the third stage engine. This single engine generates enough power to carry the man on a coasting flight to the moon. Approximately 30 minutes after leaving Earth orbit, the third stage will separate from the Apollo command and service modules. The third stage will continue on, swing by the moon, and go into a solar orbit. It will take almost three days from the time the men leave Earth orbit until they go into a lunar orbit. 
The first two revolutions around the moon will be made in an elliptical orbit 60 by 170 nautical miles above the lunar surface. The crew will then change to a circular orbit of 60 nautical miles. Jim Lovell and Bill Anders explain their jobs during the revolutions around the moon. I'll be taking sightings on the proposed uh, landing sites or a pseudo landing site uh, which has the proper lighting conditions. I'll also be taking navigation marks on control points on the far side of the moon, that area where we don't have a uh, good idea on the coordinates. At the same time that I'm doing the navigation, Bill, and I think he'll cover this, will be taking photography of certain areas. Bill, you want to continue? We have uh, several passes uh, scheduled for strip photography of the lunar surface in order to get a better idea of some of the portions of the moon which the orbiter uh, didn't cover too well. Uh, this will help us in, uh, in tying down a lunar grid for our uh, lunar landing missions and will uh, also assist us somewhat in, in uh, being able to determine the exact position of the spacecraft to see if the orbit was perturbed at all by any uh, uh, non-homogeneity in, uh, in the lunar surface. Uh, we'll also be doing uh, uh, photographs of the landing site for sites that are available depending on what day we go, uh, the ones that Jim is tracking on. And we'll be uh, doing some dark side photography with uh, some high speed film. And uh, we have a roughly uh, 1,200 uh, exposures available to us, which we'll be using uh, uh, for targets of opportunity of various kinds. We also have 60 millimeter uh, camera on board, which uh, will be used to do tracking of uh, landing sites uh, for training of uh, future films and general uh, lunar surface analysis. After eight orbits, the men will spend the next two revolutions checking out the vehicle in preparation to return home. Their time in orbit around the moon will be approximately 20 hours. At the end of the 10th orbit, the crew will fire the main engine on the service module, which will give them the thrust needed to break away from the lunar orbit and start their trip home. The time involved in the return to Earth should take about two and a half days. Approximately 15 minutes prior to entering Earth's atmosphere, which is about 400,000 feet altitude, the spacecraft will separate from the service module and position itself for the proper re-entry. Re-entry will come about six days and three hours after liftoff. The spacecraft is scheduled to land in the Pacific Ocean approximately 1,350 nautical miles south-southwest of Honolulu. Here, the mission will end. A mission designed to reap a vast harvest of knowledge on such things as deep space navigation, tracking and targeting accuracy, communications at lunar distances, lunar photography, and most important, the experience gained in going to and from the moon, a trip that will contribute greatly to the lunar landing mission scheduled for next year. Man, machine, moon. The three major characters in the upcoming performance of Apollo 8.